All right, uh, go talk about money or currency. I might use those words interchangeably. So there are four types of money I'm going to talk about. There's fiat money, there's standardized money, and then there is unsound and sound money. So oftentimes people will try to simplify these four types of money into two types. And what I mean by that is people will equate fiat money to unsound money, and they'll equate standardized money into sound money. Now, this is very short-sighted logic, and, I, and I'm going to explain why. But first, let's just kind of define these four types of money. So sound money is money that is sound. Sound money is money that makes sense. So sound money will have a reliable and predictable value. So if you buy a gallon of milk today for $5, that gallon of milk is going to cost $5 tomorrow, $5 the next day, and $5 in 10 years from now, right? On the other hand, unsound money is money that doesn't make sense, okay? It's the opposite of sound money. Unsound money doesn't have a reliable and predictable value. So that $5 gallon of milk might cost $10 tomorrow, or it might cost a dollar in 20 years. You, you just don't know, right? So... Now let's talk about fiat money. So fiat money is money that is not backed by anything physical. On the other hand, standardized money is backed by something physical. Okay, the obvious example is the gold standard. A standardized, a gold standardized currency is money that is backed by physical gold. And on the other hand, that, that fiat money is money that's not backed by anything physical. It's usually a rare precious metal that backs a standardized currency because... Again, it's rare and it's physical. So the thing we have to realize here, though, is that just because fiat currency isn't backed by something physical, it doesn't mean that it's not backed by anything at all. Okay, so what, that, what I mean by that is fiat currency is backed by an idea. Okay, it's backed by the idea that that currency has value. So if we look at the U.S. dollar, for example, the U.S. dollar is a fiat currency. The U.S. dollar is backed by the idea that the U.S. dollar has value. It's backed by the idea of the U.S. nation in general. That's no small idea, okay? That's a, that's a very big idea, a very powerful idea. And what we could say is that the U.S. dollar is backed by the idea that the U.S. nation and the U.S. population will create economic output today and into the future. And beyond that, perhaps unfortunately, the U.S. dollar is also backed by the idea that the U.S. is a powerful nation, militarily speaking. So what that really means is the U.S. dollar is protected by the fact that anyone who might challenge it might, might, might uh, get themselves into a hot war that they want nothing to do with, right? There are examples of this in the past, right? We have, and not even that, not even necessarily military wars, but economic wars, sanctions, right? We've placed sanctions on many nations in the past for challenging the U.S. dollar, the, the U.S. dollar's reserve currency status, right? So even though the pattern is, even though the U.S. has been successful at that in the past, I actually do think the, I think the tides are turning a bit. And I think, uh, I think the, the BRICS nations are perhaps going to kind of overcome the G7 in coming years, but that's kind of a different topic. What we really need to realize here, though, is that, again, fiat currency is backed by an idea, and ideas can be very powerful. Nothing, the U.S. nation, the U.S. empire is nothing to scoff at. And we, but However, though, we still do need to recognize that fiat currencies can present problems. And one such problem is inflation, okay? Because a fiat because fiat currencies are not backed by anything physical, you don't have to acquire that physical thing to print money. In other words, the Fed, who controls the money supply in the United States, can print money as fast as the printer will print, so long as it's got paper and ink, right? So there's no shortage of paper and ink. So they can print as much money as they want. And... To kind of provide an example of how this can become a problem, I'm going to kind of simplify it. Let's, let's imagine that there is an economy that has 100 units of a fiat currency. And this economy has 100 people in it. And each person produces one unit of value output per year. 
So that means a total, 100 people, one unit per person. That's 100 units per year. That's GDP, right? But again, this is a fiat currency. So what that means is that this economy can print money whenever they want. So they take it upon themselves to print 100 more units of currency. And they inject it right into the economy. They double the money supply from 100 to 200. Now, at the same time, this economy doesn't double their economic, their value output, right? So the, peop the 100 people are still only producing one unit of value per year. What is this going to do to the prices, okay? Well, it's going to double the prices, assuming two things. Assuming, A, that the government isn't regulating the prices, and B, that the market that sets the prices is profit-driven. Now, why is that? Why are the prices going to double? Well, they're going to double because everyone has to look out for their own bottom line, lest they go out of business. So, if the money supply doubles and the value output doesn't double, the, then the number of products on the shelves didn't change. But, well, people's buying power doubled. So, if people's buying power doubles but the output doesn't double, then people are going to buy twice as much stuff. Or at the very least, they're going to buy more stuff. Maybe they save a little bit. But they're going to buy more stuff, and if the value output doesn't increase, there's going to be a scarcity very quickly. So if that, again, if that economy is, if, is not, if the prices in the economy are not being regulated by a government, and if the, the market is profit-driven, the prices are going to double. And to sh give an example of why that is, let's imagine an individual market. And everyone in that market, say there's five pizza companies, pizza, five pizza joints. Four of them double their prices in response to the increase in the money supply. One of them keeps their prices the same. Now, here's the thing, though. All of the expenses that that pizza joint, those pizza joints uh, endure, they've all doubled as well because all the other companies providing the raw materials, providing the flour and the yeast and the, and the cheese to that pizza company, they've all doubled their prices. So if you are the one pizza joint who doesn't double their prices, you're probably going to go out of business, right? <laughs> because you, you're not going to be able to afford to sell the pizzas at half the price that everyone else is selling them at. So again, this is why everyone's going to double their prices in this example. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem this this injection of new money into a an economy isn't necessarily a problem in isolation and what that means what i mean by that is if that economy is isolated then the prices are going to double the money supply is going to double and the value output's going to stay the same this doesn't cause a problem in isolation because all it's going to really do is add a zero to your bank account and add a zero to the price tag it's just going to make a headache for the people who put the price tags on, on <laughs> shelves, right? But we don't live in an isolated economy, right? The United States dollar is competing with other currencies and other economies in the world. So if the U.S. dollar, if the Fed decides to print a bunch of money without matching that money with value output in the United States, you know, that's going to create a big mess, right? It's going to inflate the U.S. dollar relative to those other currencies. And that is when, uh, that's when things go haywire. That's when the hyperinflation perhaps occurs. This is why fiat currency can become unsound. On the other hand, if you look at the economy right now, the U.S. dollar is actually kind of inflating less in response to the, the world's economic woes currently. And what that perhaps means, it, as I kind of alluded to earlier, is that the idea of the U.S. dollar is very powerful. The idea of the U.S. empire, the military power and the economic power is powerful. Again, I, I do believe that's going to, to to change in coming decades. But let's let's kind of jump over to to uh, standardized currency. And the thing about standardized currency is it kind of solves this inflation problem because unless you go out and dig up gold, for example, you can't print more money. You have to have something backing that money. And you might think this solves the inflation problem, but I'll give you another example. So 
let's say that an econo- or a, a, an environmental disaster comes along, and eh, whether it's a drought, maybe it's a dust bowl, maybe it's a flood, maybe it's a tornado, maybe it's a hurricane, whatever it may be, something comes along and destroys a bunch of crops, and all of a sudden, there's a scarcity of food. Now, what this scarcity of food has done is it has created a... a a demand for food, right? And that demand isn't being met. And because that demand is being, not being met, the price of the food is going to increase, right? There's not enough food to go around, so the people who own the food are going to increase the prices. Again, assuming the, the, the profit-driven market and assuming the government isn't regulating prices, the food is going to get very expensive. Before long, people are going to be buying loaves of bread for hundreds of dollars you can buy a loaf of bread for a hundred dollars or a loaf of bread for an ounce of gold or something like that right the bottom the, the point here is that this natural disaster caused a scarcity of food and people are going to pay whatever price is on that price tag in order to survive in order to eat right the same could be said about let's say a tornado comes and tears down a bunch of houses people are going to pay whatever price is on that that uh, rental property or whatever that they have to now move to because their house was destroyed or that that camper or whatever people replace their their destroyed house with the point here is that a scarcity of necessities will put a hole in the in the, the idea that that gold is somehow going to keep a I mean, currency from from inflating you can't expect the the gold standard to keep that currency from inflating when there's a scarcity of necessities because the market is going to take advantage of the fact that there is the scarcity that there is a a deficit of necessities and supply and demand is going to do what it does and the prices are going to rise right so we have to understand that at the end of the day the gold standard itself is just an idea The idea that gold has value is no different than the idea that the U.S. dollar has value. The minute conditions arise that take the that that make the gold valueless is the minute people start buying loaves of bread for ounces of gold. Right? It doesn't. It doesn't hold. This this gold standard will not hold, or or a standardized currency in general will not hold through. This, a scarcity of necessities, whether it's caused by the environment or whether it's manufactured by an economy. So, I'm going to end this video by saying this. Sound money is dependent on the ability for an economy to harvest natural resources and turn those resources into necessities and to distribute those necessities appropriately. I'll repeat that, okay? Sound money is dependent on an economy's ability to harvest natural resources and to turn those natural resources into necessities and then to distribute those necessities appropriately. You have to both be able have the technology and production capacity to take those natural resources and translate them into necessities and then you have to be able to provide them to, to those necessities to the people who need them. If you fail either of those things, You're going to create chaos every single time. You're going to create unsound money every single time. It doesn't matter if you... The thing is, is these rules apply to fiat and standardized currency. If you have... You can have a fiat currency. So long as you check those two boxes, so long as you can, can make necessities out of natural resources and distribute those necessities appropriately, fiat currency will work forever. Same with standardized currency. The truth is, the standardized currency just kind of takes an extra step. Because again, it's just it's just adding the it's adding something physical to that idea. You don't need the physical thing for the idea. You need the idea, and the idea that a, a currency holds value collapses when the population cannot get the necessities they need. If you can't get your necessities, you're not going to make it to work. The economy's going to collapse. If you can't get shelter, you're not going to be able to hold up a job, and the economy's going to collapse can't get food you're gonna starve and the economy's gonna collapse you get the point right so thanks for watching